All right, so now uh, after our do not question, um, we're going to transition to guided notes. Um, just like last week, your notes are all given to you, all the keepers are given to you, and I provided questions uh, for each. So uh, we're going to be looking at two big terms today, okay. hence the name of your exit ticket, imperialism and colonialism. Those are two big words, and you're going to see those words. Uh, especially colonialism, you're going to see that in 8th grade. Now, let's look at this, the first part of the notes. Remember, we're talking about, this unit is about Africa and history, okay? So, in order to understand today's lesson, uh, we need to have a little bit of a terminology for this. Yeah. So, imperialism. What is imperialism? So, imperialism is the practice. Notice that I, I uh, emphasize them in red. Practice means doing. Okay? It's the practice of extending. So that means like making bigger. A nation's power by controlling other territories. Now, if you look at this picture right here, uh, I know the United States is being portrayed as um, a little bit of a, you know, like a, a domination war, conquering the whole, the whole world, okay? Um, there's a rationale behind that, okay? So, today, the United States geopolitics, if you analyze geopolitics today, you'll see the United States has a lot of military bases spread out all across the world, Okay. And some will say, will argue that this is the United States practice of imperialism, you know, maintaining their power across the world by having military bases. Okay, that's what imperialism is. When you, when it's the practice of trying to control, uh, to extend, like make the United, the a country very powerful by going out there and trying and controlling other territories. Like this, this piece of land, land is mine now. This piece of land is not mine, and so on. Okay. And then colonialism, the number two, is the practice of directly controlling and settling foreign territories. So that means literally directly, like from the United States to the uh, Puerto Rico, the United States to directly to Iraq. I think th things of that sort. Colonialism will be very prevalent in Europe during the late 1800s. And we're going to be discussing that how, on how that happened. Especially for Africa. So, before Africa in the late 1800s when it was colonized, uh, Europe, that will be France, Spain, and Britain, they're going to colonize this right here, North and South America. After the North and South America was colonized or conquered or uh, they got their independence, Europe is going to look for a new target. And that will be Africa. Okay? And unfortunately, Africa is going to suffer a lot of uh, negative effects that will still linger to this day. Okay. All right. Now take one, take two to three minutes to answer the question you have in your guiding notes. What's the difference between colonialism and imperialism? Press pause and then press play when you're ready. All right. So imperialism. So make sure that if you didn't have this, uh, just erase your responses or uh, delete and then retype them or from your, your iPads. So here's the difference between those two. Imperialism is basically... Uh, taking over land around the world as a way to get more powerful okay that's what it is it's just the like the the idea to try to conquer the world in, in a sense not in this, not literally but in a way to the more land you occupy from other territories that are, are that have their own countries uh, the more power you protect your country okay and then colonialism is basically we have simply a very direct simply like very straightforward like hey uh, you are not part part of my territory, uh, part of my uh, area, and I'm gonna control you. You will provide us with resources, and in, in exchange, okay, we'll we'll leave you alone. Okay, this is the difference between those two. Okay, all right, all right. So colonialism again is a directly practice of direct uh, controlling the settling foreign territories. Right here, you have an image of England. England, as you can see, is 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 a uh, representative as what kind of animal? Okay. And of course, you'll identify this as an octopus um, with uh, various arms, and every arm is capturing certain uh, countries, okay? Like Jamaica, you have um, um, Malta, okay? All these weak countries are being taken over by England, okay? And they're going to be colonized and by force, okay? Now, this is a political cartoon, um, and I want you to look at these three characters, okay? These three characters represent specific countries. Now, some of you probably um, 
figure it out just by simply looking at the bags. So back then in the late 1800s, the uh, the archetype or the, the 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 way typically how the British would be portrayed is like this. Okay, a suit like this with the hat. Okay. Russians would be portrayed as this, and as you can see, this is clothing that is very to to uh, prevent from uh, the harsh winters that they have in Russia. And if you look at the Germans, okay, uh, this is the Kaiser uh, helmet that you have here. Um, this is the typical helmet that the leaders will be wearing. Okay, so as you can see, what do you see those three countries doing? What are they trying to? Um, what this is, of course, you can see the earth, but what are they trying to do? Okay, why why do they have their hands? Okay, on pieces of land. So I'm sure as you guys are figuring it out, look, you look at the bags, grab bag. That means that, hey, we're going to go in there and we're going to see what we're going to take. This is mine. That's mine. And that's yours. And they they did it as as quick and as uh, polished, you might say, uh, fairly within themselves, without the respect of the African people. The African people had no idea this was going on. They were simply minding their own business, living their lives. Next thing you know, you have... Europeans arriving and saying, hey, this is our land. This is you got you guys are part of our territory and we demand that you provide us resources. That's colonization. And unfortunately, that's what happened to Africa. Okay. This is another picture. This is something that you'll learn in eighth grade, mercantilism. Okay. This is where you have uh, the colonies that will be providing the mother country with natural resources. Okay. And as you can see right here, we have um for example, this is basically from the 13 colonies. The 13 colonies, okay, right here, colony, 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 were providing the mother country, which is for the United States, that'll be Britain, with these three things, gold and silver, uh, food, and raw materials. Remember, this is things that are not finished. Remember from last week when we talked about the triangular trade, okay? Um, you have the colonies providing raw materials, and then, for example, they'll be, they'll be getting lumber. The mother country is going to turn that into ships and make a bigger profit from that. Okay, here's the analogy that I'll, I'll give you guys. So, for example, if you're in class and I was to ask you guys, um, I want you guys to bring me um, the resources you'll need to make cupcakes. So, one of you will bring me the, um, the, the utensils. One of you will bring the flour. Some of you guys will bring the eggs and all the materials. Okay, those are the raw materials. Okay, and what I'm going to do is that you're going to sell it to me for a cheap price. I'm going to make the cupcakes and I'm going to sell it back to you for a higher price. Okay. Of course, that's not fair. And unfortunately, that's what the 13 colonies went through. And that's one of the reasons why you'll see the, one of the causes for the American, American revolution. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So European nations wanted to extend, extend means to stretch out. Think of this picture right here. Look at this picture. This individual, this is a cartoon. I guarantee you're going to see this in U.S. history. Their power in the world, as it competed for riches and territory, they turned to Africa for its rich natural resources to fuel. That means to make it much, like even much more energy. Their industrialization. So Europe, all the countries were there looking at each other, saying like, "Well, if we want to become more powerful, which place in the world is very close and very unstable or weak, and we can take advantage of?" And then Europe realizes, "Hey, we have Africa right next to us, being on south south of our borders." Why don't we just go there and take over? And of course, they all, you know, halted each other. He's saying, hey, hey, okay, we can't, you can't just, who's, who's going to determine who's going to own what and what, okay? So they all have to have this very um, unfortunate, not really sophisticated meeting, but uh, they had this formal meeting where they're going to meet and they're all going to literally divide Africa to their, uh, to their own advantage, okay? All right, continue with the notes. European nations used brute, brute military force to dominate African nations. Just like in the United States, when Native American nations were unable to join together to resist European invasion, so too were warring African groups unable to show a united front against European invasion. Take about two to three minutes to answer the question in your guided notes. Press pause and then press play when you're uh, when you're ready. All right. So how is it similar? So in Africa, there's a lot of tribes, a lot of communities that were uh, had a lot of friction, tension with each other. There were enemies. And because they saw the European invasion arriving, they had no option um, 
they it was a hard uh moment for them to really unite and fight together against the European invasion. They had no op they had no opportunity to really un unify and resist properly. And that's the same thing that happened to the uh, Native Americans in the United States, who a lot of them were enemies with each other. But when it came to time to resist, um, a lot of the, a lot of them has a hard time trying to become friends with the other side and unified so can, they can resist. So unfortunately for the Native Americans and the Africans, they had uh, little hope to resist any European invasion. And again, we talked about how disease wiped up 90 to 95 percent of the Native American population through smallpox. That's because they had no immunity to disease.